Hey guys, it's Megan, and today I'm back with part 3 in my Things to Do in Your Board series. A lot of the ideas that I have for you guys today are either apps or websites or just things that don't require a ton of supplies to do. We have a lot to get through today, so let's just get into it. The first idea I came up with is to take these light painting photos. This is something that I've always wanted to try, and it turned out being a lot easier than I thought it would be. For this, you'll either need a DSLR camera or this app called Slow Shutter Cam. It is $2, but it was definitely worth it. You'll also need either a small flashlight or some glow sticks, or really anything that lights up or glows in the dark. If you're gonna use anything with fire, like a lighter or sparklers, maybe do that outside though. When you get the app, click the menu button right here and set the self timer. You can also change things like the resolution and the aspect ratio if you want. Then go into the settings and select light trail. You can play around with it, but I chose to make the light sensitivity full and the shutter speed 8 seconds. The shutter speed is basically how long that you'll have to draw the shape. And we're just going to ignore the close up of my face because that is terrifying. And I left the ISO on auto here, but I ended up changing it to about 400 later. When you're ready, click the button, get into position, and use your flashlight to draw anything that you'd like. If you find that you're getting spots like this in your pictures, try angling the light down a little bit when you draw. To save the picture, just click save and it should be in your camera roll. I spelled out my name, drew a heart, and did a star. The next idea is another app which I love, and this one's free so that's great. It's called Anti-Stress, and when you open the app, there's a ton of different things to mess around and fidget with. One of my favorites is these metal balls. When you move your phone, you can hear them clanking together, and I don't know how they do it, but you can like feel the weight of them going across and hitting the side of your phone. It's like so weird, you guys have to get this and try it out. There's also this wood block puzzle game that's pretty fun. These gears, which again, you can feel them moving, which is so weird. And they have the classic fidget spinner, bubble wrap, pinball, this maze where you have to like tilt your phone to move the ball. They even have this zipper one, which it feels like you're actually unzipping something. This is seriously my new favorite app and I definitely did not expect to like this this much. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite app is. If you like drawing, which if you're watching this channel, you probably do, I just discovered this app called Wanna Draw. When you open the app, click random drawing generator and then these cards will come up. Click each one and then it'll tell you who slash what to draw. The app told me to draw a giraffe as a superhero and a vampire as a Powerpuff Girl. There are so many different ideas in here. And if you don't like the suggestion that comes up, you can just click try again to get a new one. The fourth idea is to write an email to your future self. If you go to futureme.org, you can write an email that will be sent to your email address in a few years. You can choose when you want it to be sent to you. I just chose a specific date and put two years from now. This would be a kind of cool way to document what's going on in your life right now. You can write about what you've been doing to pass the time, what the current trends are, what your favorite songs are at the moment, whatever you want to, really. Something I always like to do in spring is press flowers. We have a bunch of these purple flowers that grow in our yard every year. I picked out a bunch of them, took them inside, and laid them down on top of a piece of paper. Lay a second piece of paper on top and put something heavy on top of it. I used a box full of paper. Press down on it for about two or three minutes to flatten everything, then remove your heavy object. Put your iron on the lowest heat setting and lay it on top of the paper. Don't move it around, just hold it in one spot for about 10 seconds, then pick it up and move it to the next spot. And now you have some super easy and quick pressed flowers. You can use these in all sorts of projects, but you'll have to stay tuned for my next video to see how I used mine. Something that I used to do all the time when I was bored was to just look up random things on Wikipedia. Obviously, this is really self-explanatory, I just looked around my room and searched for random things to like look up. So I found this gum and a water bottle, and this might not sound that exciting when I like say it out loud, but you can actually learn a lot from doing this. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm just a boring person, but I do know a bunch of useless facts. If you're looking for a game to play when you're bored, I definitely suggest Wordscapes. My mom is super addicted to this game, she's on like level 7000 or something, and it's basically like a crossword puzzle. You just connect the letters in a circle to create words, and the puzzles get harder as you go on. 
A little hack that my mom likes to use is to turn off your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth so that you don't get ads popping up every five seconds. Another fun thing you could do is to make an endless card. For this, all you need is a piece of paper, scissors, tape or glue, and something to decorate it with, like crayons or colored pencils. First, fold the bottom corner of your paper up to create a square. Cut off this extra rectangle, and then unfold the square. Fold the paper in half, then open it back up. Fold in both of the edges to meet at the center fold, and unfold everything again. Turn your paper around, and fold it back in half. Unfold it, and do the same thing that we did before, folding both edges in to meet the center. When you're done, your paper should look like this. Fold the paper in half again, and cut out these two squares. Open it up, and here's what it should look like. Put tape or glue on the top right and the bottom left square, and fold the edges in to meet at the center line. Then, add more tape or glue on the top right and the bottom left squares, and fold them in to create a square. And when you're done, it should look like this. You can decorate your card any way you'd like. I used some Crayola colored pencils to draw a different animal print on each side. Idea number nine is to make a photo wall canvas. We've all seen those photo walls that people make, and they're cute and all, but you might not want it to take up your whole wall. This is a super easy project. Just go on a website like Pinterest or We Heart It and search for images that you'd like to use. You guys know I have to make everything purple, so that's the color scheme that I went with. Once I had all of my images, I put them in a Word document and printed them out on this photo paper that I had left over from another project. And if you don't have photo paper, regular paper would work just fine. I stuck the photos on this old canvas that I had. This was left over from my first and last attempt at oil painting because, as you can see, it did not go so well. So I just painted over that with some purple acrylic paint and collaged the photos on top. If you don't have a canvas, you could use any other flat surface like a piece of recycled cardboard, foam board, or even a sheet of plywood. I stuck the photos on with some Mod Podge, and that was it. This is the perfect way to dress up your room without doing anything too crazy. Another thing you can do when you're bored is to plan out your Instagram feed. Since I post mainly art-related content, I filled up a few sketchbook pages and headed outside to take pictures. The weather wasn't super great the day that I did this, but hey, it wasn't raining, so, you know, I'll take what I can get. I just took a bunch of pictures, edited them with Lightroom, and added watermarks with the PixArt app. Now I have 10 posts all edited and ready to go. And if you want to get really fancy, you can use this app called Preview to see how your pictures will look on your feed before you post them. The next idea is to make your own font. All you have to do is go to the website calligrapher.com and create an account. Click Create a Template and choose which characters you'd like to include. The free version lets you put 75 characters, so I chose minimal English, minimal numbers, and minimal punctuation. Then I went through and deleted some of the characters that I don't use that often to narrow it down to 75. Click Download Template, print it out, and write your letters in the corresponding boxes. After you've written all the letters, take a picture of the printout and upload it to the website. Once it's uploaded, click Add Characters to your font. Then go up to Build Font, and if there are any random dots on the letter that you don't want, Click on the letter, click the eraser tool, and erase anything that you don't need. Do this for all of the letters, then you can edit the font details and click on a file to download it. To install the font on a Mac, just double click the file, click install font, then make sure that you close that. And when you open up Word, your font should be right there. Idea number 12 is to play an old online game. I keep seeing people going into their old Webkins accounts, and I don't know, I just thought that it would be really fun to do that. So I was originally going to log in and get a few clips for this video, but I actually ended up playing this for like two hours. One of the things that I always liked about this game is that the furniture in the rooms is kind of like interactive. So like there's this book on the desk and when you click on it, it shows you how to draw the different webkins or you can go to the bath and it'll actually, it's like a little game where you give your pet a bath. And if you didn't have webkins, you can go to disney-games.com and play some of the old Disney games. This Brandy and Mr. Whiskers game was always my favorite, and I always liked the fashion games too, like this Hannah Montana Nails one where you get like this weird craft to print out the end, and that reminded me of this My Seam nail game that it actually like prints out the nails that you make, which 
I don't know how that's exactly supposed to work, but if you go to this website, you can find a bunch of the old Mycene and Barbie and Polly Pocket games. Not gonna lie, I had way more fun doing this than I thought that I would. Now, as much as I hate doing this, cleaning out your closet is something that you should do at least once a year. And boy, did my closet need it. Honestly, half of this stuff is either summer clothes or stuff that I don't really wear. And not gonna lie, I really need to invest in some new clothes because most of this is at least five years old. But anyways, in every single closet organizing video that I have ever watched, they always tell you to get matching hangers. And as you guys know, I'm cheap, so I never did that. But then I thought, you know, maybe if it looked nicer, I might actually be more motivated to put my clothes away. So I finally did it. I bought a pack of 100 hangers on Amazon, which looks like a lot, but I actually ended up using most of them. And surprisingly, it kind of makes a difference. I didn't do the bins on the bottom yet because doing the shelves on the sides and the new hangers already took me like five hours, but this is definitely something that can fill up your whole entire day. Plus, if you're anything like me, you'll probably get distracted with all the things that you forgot that you had. I found a bracelet making kit, this top from Box of Pop Tarts, a Hello Kitty keychain, these mustache tattoos, which were a thing. I don't know why I thought this was a good look when I was 12, but alright then. You'll find all kinds of fun stuff. When you're done cleaning out your closet, you'll probably have a big pile of stuff to get rid of. This is the perfect opportunity to make some fabric projects. One of my favorite things that I made from old clothes is the Jean pocket wall organizer in my craft room. I made a denim jacket from the rest of the jeans, which was definitely a learning experience, and the gray fabric on my sewing machine mat was from a pair of my dad's old sweatpants. Old clothes are perfect for making scrunchies. I made these ones with zippers in them a while back. And if you're not into sewing, you could try altering things in other ways. I found these makeup pouches when I was organizing my closet, and they'd be the perfect canvas to paint on. And the last idea that I have for you guys is to try out different outfit combinations. Since you're probably not being rushed out the door, this is the perfect time to experiment. I got these black cargo pants at Target last month, and don't ask me why, I always see things on other people and I'm like, oh, that's cute, but then I try it and I look like a potato. Uh, I don't hate them, the pockets are kind of weird, but I don't really have anything that goes with them. This one doesn't match at all, this one, I kind of look like a mime or something. Hate it. Eh. Moral of the story is that A, I really need to go shopping, and B, maybe cargo pants are not my best look. But anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. And yeah, I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy, and I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!